Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Today I'm going to show you how to assemble our new XR2206 signal generator kit. This is the final product. Uh, what we've got here is a, a PCB socket XR2206 output jack, six electrolytic, uh, sorry, six ceramic capacitors, six fixed resistors, uh, two variable resistors for amplitude and frequency adjustment, two onboard variable resistors for offset voltage and your sine wave adjustment, a switch to switch between triangle wave and sine wave output, an LED, three electrolytic capacitors, a terminal block, and a four pin diff switch. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through piece by piece and assemble this so you can follow along with the video. We're going to start off with the ceramic capacitors and then we'll go on to the electrolytics. So please follow along. The first capacitor, C1, is a ceramic capacitor and it's labeled 1NJ100. Solder that into place. It doesn't matter which way you put it in. C2 is labeled 10NJ100. C3, C5, and C6 are labeled 100NJ100. C7 is labeled 220NJ100. The last capacitor, then the largest one of the ceramics, is labeled 105J100. Now let's talk about the electrolytics. There are two 220 microfarad uh, electrolytic capacitors. One is placed here, one is placed here, and there is a ten, single 10 microfarad uh, electrolytic capacitor that is placed here. So. Uh, there is a plus sign indicating the positive lead of the capacitor for all three capacitors. Make sure that you uh, line the positive symbol up with the longer lead of the capacitor. The longer lead of the capacitor is the positive lead. So in the case for of a C9, the positive is on the left side of the board. So I want to make sure that my lead goes in the uh, leftmost uh, hole and for C10 I'm going to want to place the longer lead on the right side so again sorry C9 longer lead in the left side C10 longer lead on the right side and in the case of C8 you're going to want to have the longer lead on the right side because the positive symbol is right there so let's solder those into place now that we've soldered our capacitors, let's start off with the two, our first two variable resistors. The top one, R1, is labeled B102. R7 is another variable resistor, and that is labeled B105. Solder them into place. They only go in one way. With those variable resistors in place, we're now going to place our uh, fixed resistors. Our fixed resistors have uh, three different values. 100K for one of them. Another is a 470 ohm resistor. And the other four are 1K ohm resistors. So let's place our 1K ohm resistors first. R3, R9, R8, and R10 are all 1K ohm resistors. Solder them into place. R4 is a 100K ohm resistor. Solder into place. R2 is a 470 ohm resistor. That's our last resistor. Now let's solder on our switch and our terminal block. The switch only fits in one way, so it's really easy to uh, place it. And the terminal block, you want to make sure that the screws, the mount, the, the, the terminals are facing outwards, not inwards, or else you're going to have to desolder it and resolder it. So now let's worry about putting the socket in and the dip switch. There is a notch on one side of the socket line it up with the notch on the footprint of the socket on the board. That notch is an indicator and we're going to need it because once you place the socket onto the board the footprint indicator is not going to be there anymore. So look for the notch in the socket and solder it into place. Now that we've put the socket in and soldered it in place we can now line up the notch on the chip with the notch on the socket and place it. So now that we've placed the uh, XR2206 in the socket. Now let's put our dip switch in. What we're going to want to do 
is place the dip switch uh, in like so. In the upper left hand corner here, from my perspective, there is an on and a deep, like an on indicator and a DP indicator. Make sure the on and DP side is facing the chip. Okay, we're getting now down to the nitty gritty here. The last of the small components, the diode, or the or rather the LED, goes right here in uh, D5. Now, one thing to be very careful of here, the footprint looks round, but there actually is a flat side on it, closest to uh, to our output terminal here. Uh, and the flat side, that's our negative. If you look at the LED, there's a shorter side, which is our cathode, or rather negative side, and our longer lead, which is our anode, or positive lead. Place the shorter lead closest to our output terminal here. And that, again, there's a flat edge on the footprint indicating the negative side. So, place the diode, solder it, and then we'll do, take the final steps. Now that we're done that, we're going to solder in our output terminal. It only fits in one way. So make sure your solder connections are good. Solder it in, and then we'll solder the last two variable resistors and place the knobs on. As for your two variable resistors, you can't see from this angle, but one is labeled on the top behind here, 50K, and one is labeled 1M. Make sure to place the 50K in the right side on R5 and the 1M on R6. Place them in and solder them, and then we'll place the knobs. It's finally taking shape, huh? So what you want to do as a final step is turn both knobs all the way to the left, and you'll notice that on your knobs there's an indicator, so you want your indicator to be on the lower right hand side. It should fit right on. So now, you get the full spectrum. We'll do that for both. Of course, they slide on and off so you can fiddle with it to get it perfect. And there you go. Now, we're going to have a separate video with an oscilloscope uh, demonstration on how to use uh, the two onboard variable resistors to tune your XR2206 kit, and we're going to show you how to use it as well. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully, you have no problems assembling your kit.